Hello, hello, it's Mr. Slope Guy here today to help you guys with dilations. Dilation. So a dilation is a transformation that produces an image that is the same shape as the original, but is a different size. And we have two types of dilation. So a dil dilation used to create an image larger than the original is called an enlargement. And a dilation used to create an image smaller than the original is called a reduction. And a dilation is a transformation in which one of the figures is made larger or smaller with respect to a point called the center of dilation. So I have a graph here showing center of dilation. And we could go from the pink to the blue being an enlargement or from the blue to the pink being a reduction, both types of dilation. So dilations always involve a change in size, but this, the original and the image are similar, meaning they're the same shape, but not necessarily the same size anymore. So first we can check with prime notation, which is the original and which is the image. So the original in this would be ABC and the image would be A prime, B prime, C prime. So we know we went from small to big so going from small to big is an enlargement. And if we look at each of the points, we have point A is at negative 2, negative 2, ordered pair negative 2, negative 2. We have B at 1, negative 1. And we have C at 0, 2. Then if I look at the enlargement, A prime is at negative 4, negative 4. And was at negative 2, negative 2. B prime is at 2, negative 2 and C prime at zero, four. So if I look for some type of pattern with my negative two, negative two, to negative four, negative four, looks to be two, each number multiplied by two. Or from B to B prime, one times two is two, negative one times two is negative two. Looks like everything has been being multiplied by two. Even zero times two is zero, two times two is four. So for my points, it looks like each of the points have been multiplied by two, which is kind of showing us that we have a scale factor or an enlargement of two. So every coordinate of the original triangle has been multiplied by the scale factor of two. So you're gonna have a scale factor um, that has growth if you have a scale factor greater than one. So let's tell whether the figure is a dilation, if the blue figure is a dilation of the red figure. So from the red figure to the blue figure on A. What's happened from the red figure to the blue figure on A? We have a dilation. It's showing a reduction. How about from red to blue on B? Well, these look like the same size. So it looks like we've just had a translation or a slide doesn't look like we've had an enlargement or a reduction. And on C, from red to blue, we have these nice lines with our center of dilation. This is showing from red to blue, it is showing a reduction again. How about from red to blue on these? So red to blue, what does this one look like? Well, same size, different orientation. Looks like it has been reflected. And from red to blue on this one, we have two rectangles from red to blue, from small to big. Looks like a dilation and it is an enlargement from red to blue. So what is scale factor? So our scale factor in this one, if we look at we had AB, our original triangle is this red one, ABC. We have AB is two, and A prime, B prime, A prime to B prime, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we went from two to six. Two times what is six? Two times three. You can check it on BC. BC is two. B prime to C prime is six. So it does look like it's been multiplied. Everything was multiplied by three, so our scale factor is three. Two key points to write down. When k is greater than one, the dilation is an enlargement. And that makes sense because we know multiplying by a number greater than one will give us a larger outcome. 
And when k is greater than 0 and k is greater than 1, meaning it's between 0 and 1, a fraction between 0 and 1 will be a reduction. And we know that whenever we take a number and multiply by a fraction of a number, a number between 0 and 1, like 1 half, 1 third, 1 fifth, we'll get a smaller number for an answer. So scale factors greater than 1 will be an enlargement. And if our scale factor is between 0 and 1, we will get a reduction. In this case, we went three times larger. We went from the small red triangle to the large blue triangle. Remember prime notation, the original doesn't have the prime markings, and our image or our copy has the little apostrophe showing A prime, B prime, C prime. So use the coordinates to find the length of each side. All right, so if we look at X prime to Y prime, x prime to y prime. Oh, and look, we have a different scale. The harder problems we run into don't have scales of one, they have different scales. So this scale is counting by twos. So even though x prime to y prime is two spaces, but two spaces counting by twos, we have four there. And x, y, one, two, three, four spaces, but from counting by twos, so we have eight. So our scale factor is one half. So notice our original is the large red triangle and our image is the blue rectangle. So our scale factor makes sense to be between zero and one. So a scale factor of one half. Now on test day, quiz day, homework, if you get this mixed up, if you're going from small to large or large to small, you're gonna get a different answer. So one of the first things you need to do is identify what's the original. In this case, the red's the original. You're going from large to small, so you have a reduction. And we can check another side with that. We could do x prime to w prime is seven, x to w is 14, also reduces to one half, um, which makes sense. We have the same scale factor on those. So is rectangle W prime, X prime, Y prime, Z prime a dilation of W, X, Y, Z? Yes, it is. Is it a reduction or an enlargement? Well, we went from big to small, so that is a reduction. So if I had a triangle with the given vertices, 0, 2, 3, 2, 3, 0, what are the new vertices after a dilation of 3? So if my scale factor is three, the great thing about this is I can do these with multiplication without even really having a graph in front of me. I can take each of these points, multiply by three. Zero times three is zero, two times three is six, three times three is nine, two times three is six, three times zero is nine, and zero times three is zero. And I can get the ordered pair just by multiplying everything by the scale factor. And was this an enlargement or reduction? Well, multiplying everything by three made my new triangle three times larger, so that is an enlargement. All right, pause the video here, try this one on your own, and then come back and check and see how you did. All right, welcome back. If we had a triangle with a given vertice of 0, 2, 6, 2, 6, 4, what are the new vertices after a dilation of k equals 0 0.5? Well, I can take each of those points, multiply by 0 0.5, which is going to give me half of each own. Half of 0 is 0, half of 2 is 1, half of 6 is 3, half of 2 is 1, half of 6 is 3, and half of 4 is 2. Then, was this dilation an enlargement or a reduction? Well, the triangle would have definitely got smaller. Multiplying it by this number being between 0 and 1 will give us a reduction. Remember, figures that have been enlarged or reduced from a dilation are similar but not congruent, meaning they're the same shape, but they're no longer the same size. So if you've had a dilation, you're still going to have similar figures. They're still going to have the same shape, but they're no longer congruent because they're not the same size anymore. Remember, congruent, same in size and shape. Congruent figures, if you have a transformation of a rotation, a reflection, or a translation, 
they're going to remain congruent. They're going to be the same size and same shape. If we just rotate, reflect, or translate, then the figures remain congruent. It's dilations that will no longer be congruent because they're bigger or smaller, even though they're the same shape. Hope that gets you guys started on dilations. Have a great day. O-U-T spells out.